All right, thank you. So for those of you who are not here for the Trove project update, you want to look at your schedules quickly and figure out where you want to go. Uh, my name is Amrit. I'm the PTL for Trove. Um, have worked on Trove since about Ice House, just before Ice House. Um, I think I have about 35 or 40 minutes, but I don't have stuff for that much time. So if you have questions, let's make it interactive. Um, so what does Trove do? Uh, Trove is the database as a service project for OpenStack. Uh, how many of you here have deployed Trove? How many of you have it in production? Okay. Um, what databases are you guys using? Way over in the back. Okay. Uh, anybody else? Other databases? MongoDB. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Anything else? Anybody interested in databases which are not supported yet? Okay. Um, so Trove is a framework. Trove is not the database. Uh, Trove is a framework within which you can orchestrate, manage lifecycle of many different databases, like you've heard here, Mongo, Maria, MySQL. Um, the objective is to make it easy for you to manage a enterprise deployment of an application which potentially has multiple databases in the back end. Um, the project itself was created by the folks from Rackspace and HP. It was incubated before the Icehouse release. It was integrated in Icehouse. This was when we still had the integrated OpenStack. In the most recent release, which was uh, Okada, we had 25 or 30 contributors, between 25 and 30 contributors. Um, and some numbers from the user survey. Um, Trove is in production in 3% of the deploy, in 3% of the surveyed companies. 13% uh, of the people who were surveyed had deployed Trove. 10% uh, were testing it. And 33% of the people surveyed were interested in using Trove in the next cycle. Um, I think the numbers have been relatively consistent over the last couple of releases, um, the consistent as in, and there has been growth. I think the only thing which is kind of new on this slide is we have the fancy new logo, which you can see on the top, which you've probably seen for the other projects as well. So in the, uh, in the Pike release, um, the significant things which we're looking to do are the two community goals. Um, one of them is to put the API behind the Whiskey server and uh, support Python 3. The controller side is now fully Python 3 enabled. The guests are potentially not completely Python 3 enabled. For those of you who are familiar with the Trove architecture, you realize there's a control plane component and a guest agent component. And there is some code in the guest agent, which is potentially Python 3 questionable at this point. So we're hoping to get that done by the time of the release. The other thing which is currently in flight is to support Xenio for all the databases. Um, we currently have a mishmash of support for Xenio and Trusty. Uh, many of the databases currently have uh, Xenio support. Some of them don't. We're trying to get that up to, up to snuff. Um, with the Pike release, we are not going to be te testing uh, trusty guests or um, trusty controllers. So for those of you who are using trusty, you probably want to uh, keep that in mind. So the release themes for Pike, um, the major thing which we wanted to focus on for, for the Pike release was just focusing on resiliency of the project. Um, We've done a number of things in this area, but for those of you who are not familiar, there has been a significant transition in the project during this release. Um, till the previous release, till uh, Okara, um, Tesora, which was the largest contributor to the project, is now no longer officially part of the OpenStack community. Um, so that change has left a significant you know, void in terms of contributions, which is the reason why there's a whole number of these things which are, <coughs> excuse me, marked as minor focus. Um, this has basically resulted in a significantly smaller number of contributions during the Pike release, which is the reason why we're uh, diminishing the focus here. So <clears throat> looking ahead to the next release, though, uh, we are 
we had a bunch of meetings during this summit. There's a number of companies which are interested in continuing to see Trove success, succeed uh, and who are willing to put up the resources to make uh, Trove have significantly more contributions. Um, in the Queen release, therefore, the significant issues which we're going to talk about are, um, I'm going to start from the bottom. One of the things which is uh, at this point a little bit out of date is documentation, and we need to do something about that. Uh, the second thing is that there's a big uh, gap between the capabilities which are available in Trove through the API and the capabilities which are available in Trove through the CLI or through the Horizon dashboard. In, in the area of the CLI, we're still using the legacy CLI, and that is something which we have to fix and move to the OpenStack CLI. So that's all collection of things which come in the, in the area there of user experience. Um, there has been, in the Okada release, a significant set of changes which deal with security. There are some more which are planned for the Queen release. Um, the specific areas where we're thinking of hardening the system includes the way in which we use configuration groups. Right now, every time you spin up a database instance, there's a security group which is created for that instance, which is not really the best way to do it. Uh, some deployers have asked for the ability to specify a configuration group for multiple instances so they can make one change to the configuration group and have a whole bunch of uh, database instances be impacted by it. That's a capability which we are considering. There are other um, security things which we're looking at in the area of how the, the guest images then so far are built uh, and put together, um, but that is still something which is up in the air. Um, in the area of interoperability, I was thinking of most of the things related to upgrades and the way in which we handle upgrades right now. Excuse me, there was a fair amount of work which was done in the, in the Okada release for upgrades. And we have to pick that up and bring it forward again for the Queen release, uh, for, for the uh, Queen release. Um, so those are some of the uh, significant things on the, on the bottom line there. Um, Modularity and manageability are two which I want to talk about kind of together. Trove has been on a relatively fast clip from the time when we came out with the first release in Ice House till, you know, maybe the Okada release. We added support from what was originally one database, MySQL, to now having over a dozen databases. And along the way, we picked up, I think, technical debt is an understatement. It's technical monumental debt. And you know, there's a whole bunch of code refactoring which is required at this point. Um, so the manageability is not just the manageability of the system, manageability of the source as well. Um, and part of that is modularity. So those are some of the things which are, we're gonna be looking at because one of the places where it's now really hard for us to extend the project is that um, a bowl of spaghetti is probably an understatement as well. So that's unfortunately where we are and what we have to get out of right now. So these are some of the things in addition to what we had, what I just talked about, which we're looking at as capabilities for Queen. Um, Trove does support the ability to handle replication clustering of multiple different databases, but we're trying to deal with clustering and configuration management improvements. Uh, one area which is specifically lacking at this point and some of you who were there at the session this morning uh, recognize this multi-version support which we talked about. Currently, you can have only one deployed version of any database. And so MySQL, you can have 5.6, or you can have 5.5 or 5.7, not easily uh, have multiple of these. That's one of the things which we have to deal with because when you are operating a production cloud, it's not going to be realistic for you to assume that all of your tenants are going to migrate all of their version X databases to version X plus one in lockstep. Um, we started working on the OpenStack client integration. That is something which is, we literally just dipped our toe in the water. We haven't gone really far with that. We need to do more of that. I believe that's something which may be a requirement for the Queen release. I'm not sure. I don't know if anybody's attended the Queen release community goals thing. Um, another thing which has been long overdue is databases and containers. Um, how many of you are interested in databases and containers? Out of curiosity, okay. Um, <coughs> any preference on container technologies? What would you like? Alexi, okay. Docker required? Uh, wrong answer, try again. Okay. So we were thinking of doing this in, with uh, Libvirt Alexi. Uh, at least as a first step. 
The reason why we chose that direction is because Trove has one standard compute API. The only API we talk to is Nova. The Nova Docker project is no longer supported. So that's the reason why it's at this point not Docker. Um, however, if you're interested in Docker, if there's some way you can think of making that easy, um, happy to chat with you about that. And as I mentioned earlier, there is a monumental amount of technical debt and we're trying to address that. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with um, you know, the state of our CI, we have to you know, improve that. One of the complications, of course, is that we, every time you make a change, we have to test the change across a dozen databases in potentially different configurations, single instances, clusters, and so on. Um, the, the mechanism which we have for that is not really ideal. So no matter what kind of change you make, even if it's a one-line change in a, in a doc file, it goes and tests all 12 databases, which is ridiculously expensive. That's one of the kinds of things which we have to fix. Um, one area which has long been a bugbear for people deploying Trove is how do I get guest images? And we had some conversation about this this morning. Um, one of the ideas which we did have was to push up tools to make some guest image creation available to all, uh, and that is something which we're hoping to do in Queen as well. And like I said at the beginning, part of the usability, our documentation needs a little bit of rework. So looking even further ahead, I'm not sure I can say anything other than it's everything that we want. Do I have specific ideas of what these things are at this point? No, but we're planning on having something which Trevor wanted to call a Trove reboot in a couple of weeks where we're gonna have a better idea of what the roadmap is looking forward, uh, at which point hopefully we'll have, as a community, a better idea of what each of these things are. But um, my goal is to get more people involved in the project and more contributors to the project to the point where we can actually do something in this area. So with that, this is, I believe, the last slide I have. Um, um, we are at a point where we're looking to actually make this forward-looking roadmap of what the capabilities are that you want. Um, I'm gonna start at the bottom of this list and say, to help answer many of our questions, we need actual feedback on what issues you're having from deploying Trove in production or attempting to put it into production or even take it to a POC, uh, and what are the capabilities which you find are missing. Moving up from that, we need contributors to the project. And contributors are not just people who contribute code, by the way. We need people who do code reviews as well. Um, if everybody wants to contribute code but nobody wants to review it, nothing's gonna get merged. Um, unfortunate, but true. Uh, and the last thing is, to figure out what things you want code written for, we need some input on that. So if there's actual feedback you can provide us, that would be awesome. <coughs> I don't have a whole lot else, so if there's something you want to say now, I don't want this session to be just me talking. I'd like to go away from this session with some input as well. There's a bunch of people in the room who are also going to be participating on Trove, so if you have feedback, now's a great time to put, push it up. The mics are obviously not working because none of you are saying anything. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great question. How stable is it? Why isn't it in your favorite distribution? Um, I've, I've used it for a fair amount of time. Uh, I've used it since, since Ice House or give or take change. I know of a couple of people who have deployed it. Um, the issue with Trove is not stability. It's just the overall experience of getting it up and running. It is a definitely a non-trivial project. Um, why it's not in your favorite distribution, I've, I can give you a couple of answers, but I can tell you I'm not a distribution vendor, so I can't speak authoritatively. I can tell you what it looks like from the other side. Um, distribution vendors are typically tending to put things into their, into their distribution that they intend to support. The cost of supporting a project like Trove is significant. Put yourself in a position of your distribution vendor and say you're supporting Trove Trove supports a dozen different databases. Are you gonna be testing all of these? 
If so, what versions are you going to be testing? Are you going to be testing upgrades of these? So on and so forth. So until, there's, until there isn't more people using Trove, I don't see the distribution vendors wanting to put it in there. But until the distribution vendors put it in there, I don't see you wanting to use it. I have no way to break that. I hope that answers your question, or at least piques, you to the, piques your interest enough to ask another. I would point out that Trove is in Ubuntu Cloud Archive. I don't know if that's your favorite distribution, but Trove is. They do have Debian packages for conductor, and all the API, the client, Python client. It's all in Ubuntu Cloud Archive. Now you have to go to Canonical and ask them about support, mm -hmm. but it is in Ubuntu Cloud Archive. It is in that distro. Yeah, so, so I would interpret the question of is it, is it in a distro, uh, is it in his favorite distro as being is it something which the vendor is willing to support? Another vendor um, has for a long time had it in their documentation that Trove is in preview, and they would work with a, quote, trusted partner to do this. Well, the trusted partner ain't there no more. So what are people who want to use Trove supposed to do? What is the development model? What is the development model? So at this point, if you were to submit code, who's going to review it? There's probably a half dozen people in this room who are going to be the people reviewing it. Um, who is going to, who's going to commit it? It's the standard development model as any other OpenStack project. So um, the mechanism is relatively straightforward. Uh, you clone the Trove repo. You make your code change. You push the code change up using Git review because OpenStack uses Garrett, and it gets reviewed, tested by the CI, and merged to that point. What kind of changes are you looking to push up? No, okay. How do I get started? Um, unfortunately, the presentation this morning was not recorded, uh, the onboarding session. So. That would have been the cool YouTube video, but at this point, it's, I think, only audio. Uh, How would you share the uh, yeah. Sure, absolutely. I think all the PowerPoints are, are being shared by. Here's the thread on the mailing list. Uh, someone's trying to collect all the, all the slides, so if you just reply with your slides, that'll, that'll be perfect. So you will at least get the slides. If you want the cool YouTube video, the only thing I can suggest at this point is we either do it face to face or personally or WebEx or something like that. And, you know, drop me a note on IRC or uh, email or something like that, and I'm happy to help you. Okay. You'll, you, I'll definitely make sure the presentation goes on that mailing thread. But since your question is um, a bootstrapping question, are you on the mailing list is, I guess, the first question. So get on the mailing list. Um, since you want to commit code, have you signed the individual contributor license agreement? Yes. Uh, are you, therefore, you have a Launchpad account already? Yes. You're about 90% of the way there. Okay. Other questions? What's the definition of done? Um, I, I, I don't know the definition of done. I know the definition of not done, and we meet that one. On a per data store basis? No, story. Uh, I, I'm doing a story. I'm using Ant Authentic. If I, if I do a story and I commit it, okay. how do I know there's a reasonable expectation that now the requirement should be merged? For instance, um, documentation, can you self document these? Things like that. So we've not had a good set of processes around that. Uh, what we do have is that if you're going to push up a new feature, a significant new feature, you will have a spec. Um, if you're submitting a bug fix, you don't need to have a spec by extension. When you commit your code, if it's for a significant new feature and you tag it with the uh, blueprint tag, that is supposed to trigger the documentation process where the documentation will get updated. The implementation of that is that our doc liaison will get notified of it, Trevor, and um, he will do the magic to make it actually get documented. 
The documentation at this point is not bad. It's out of date. Um, and it's a perfectly fair point if you were to say what's the distinction between the two. Um, it was accurate at some point of time not too long ago. It's a question of catching it up at this point. Please. Why don't you turn around and... I'm oh, sorry. Okay. Does this work? Yeah. Or, okay. Uh, I'm trying to like reconstruct the uh, how you generate examples for the documentation because right now it doesn't support clusters and it was written a really, really long time ago. So I, I really don't understand a whole lot of how it works. I'm just trying to plan on like probably gutting it out and redoing it all over. So if anyone has experience in just, you know, simple like API generation of, um, and not to like create snippets or how normally they're listed, can you reach out to me and... Uh, can we work together? That'd be great. There's already a bug filed for it. It's, uh, it's because like there's no cluster documentation whatsoever because it only supports like one instance ID. Speak to Muggsy. 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 Okay. So you're the guy we have to blame for that thing. Okay. <laughs> All right. Which thing? <coughs> hmm? No, no. This is. No, this, this, this specific thing which he's talking about is the documentation of APIs. Um, the way it's currently done is you run a test job which invokes a whole bunch of API methods and something actually captures what is, what's the request, what's the response in a, in a successful case and an error case. Nobody wrote that code for clusters. That's about it. The tests which actually exercise the API for clusters don't exist. Yeah, there's like one global variable for an instance ID. And that's a problem. Like you have to have multiple instance IDs. And, and it iterates like through the code. So you have to like figure out where the in, it's kind of a mess. So it's not really compatible. Okay. Anything else? Going once. Um, I think we're going to have to, if so, so let me repeat the question. When is our first reboot meeting? Um, we need to find a time which is going to be convenient for Paris, you in the UK, at least as far as the Midwest. I don't know if anybody on the West Coast wants to show up or not. It's going to be a little bit early in the morning. Sorry about that. Um, we could do the alternate thing or whatever. It's probably going to take a week for us to get the meeting time nailed down because that's, that's a commit which gets reviewed and merged. I suspect we can have the first meeting in probably a week. Uh, so sometime next week or no later than the week after that. Um, the idea of waiting till the PTG to have this, yeah, no on that. It's got to be way sooner than that. Now, let's just have a quick show of hands here. 10 a.m. Central work for you? Yes. Work for you? Um, Paris? 10 a.m. Central is what time, Paris? Um, 5 p.m. Paris? Could be okay. All right, 10 a.m. Central. I'll try and see if I can get a bridge. Um, I don't know if there's a bridge available. What was that? No, but it, I'll... I'll what all we have to do is find a IRC bridge which is available at that time. So, okay. Wednesdays, still the same thing? Okay. Sounds like we have at least starting point of a consensus. Other questions? Muggsy, your hand up. You had your hand up. Um, in what way? 
the guest agent is right now pluggable, but. Oh yeah, the config map is currently a mess. That that is one of that was one of the things on the we need to do this. So that is the um, yeah, that is something which we're looking to do. Are you signing up to do it? Sounds good. Thank you. It's on the record, you know. Uh, other questions? Going once, twice, sold. Thank you, folks.